Fine. Uh, in the course of your forensic autopsy of Molly Tibbetts, did you take her fingernails? Yes. Why? Uh, that's part of our standard protocol for any suspected homicide case. And why is that part of your protocol? Um, sometimes uh, the crime laboratory can do analysis on those fingernails looking for um, assailant DNA. Sure. And especially in this case, I think we saw the photo of, of Ms. Tibbetts hand. There was an injury to the back of the hand, which would indicate that perhaps a defensive wound was found, right? Correct. So that makes the fingernails doubly important, correct? Uh, it would be important, yes. Ms. Tibbetts was uh, said to be about 5'2 or 5'3. Was that consistent with your findings? Yes. Now, the weapon that was used uh, to cause Ms. Tibbetts' death, could you tell if it was the, the same weapon throughout or could there be multiple weapons? Um, all the weapons uh, are consistent with one another and it would, uh, they would all be consistent with the same weapon, but um, I'm not able to exclude more than one weapon. Okay. And the wounds that you saw to Ms. Tibbetts' body, um, first of all, based upon the, the wound that penetrated the skull, uh, that's going to take a fairly significant knife, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so it would take a, a knife that was strong enough to go through bone, which would offer the most resistance of anywhere in the body. Okay. And are you able to give an opinion as to uh, how much force it takes to penetrate a skull? Um, I don't have a, an exact, um, any type of metric, uh, whether that be foot pounds. Um, I think we would have to rely on um, our general common uh, knowledge uh, with cooking and those types of things. Obviously, the sharper the tip of the blade, the easier and less force would be needed. The wounds to uh, Miss Tibbetts' head, we had wounds on, on both sides of the head, correct? Yes. Could you tell the, the vantage point of the assailant from where the wounds were located? No. So you couldn't tell if the assailant was standing in front of or behind Miss Tibbetts? That's correct. You couldn't tell if the assailant was standing over Miss Tibbetts? Correct. The wound to the skull, the one that penetrated the skull, was that wound in and of itself fatal? It could have been, yes. The wounds to the vertebrae, C4 and C5, we had one on the left and one on the right, correct? Yes. Can you tell from those wounds the vantage point of the assailant? No. Again, can't tell if in front of or behind. Correct. Uh, can you tell from any of these wounds uh, if Ms. Tibbetts was standing in front of or behind the assailant? Strike that. In front of or with her back turned to the assailant? I would not be able to tell that, no. Okay. How many total knife wounds did you see? Did you calculate? Yes. Um, so uh, my calculation is uh, nine definitive um, wounds. Uh, I suspect up to 12. And some of these are in the back of the body? Uh, the back of the body was decomposed. Uh, so what we're looking at is from about the armpit side area forward. Okay. Uh, and that's what's depicted in the photograph of, of the sports bra? Correct. Can you tell anything from these wounds, the size of the assailant? No. This appeared to be, in your training and experience, a, uh, a fairly frenzied attack? Um, I can't tell you the, the order or rapidity with which the, the wounds um, all occurred, uh, just the locations and the total numbers. The injuries to the neck, you talked about the carotid artery, the jugular vein, uh, and the other artery, which I'm not going to try to pronounce. Um, <laughs> those all, if they're severed, cause significant blood loss, don't they? Yes. And you expect to find significant blood um, in a location other than a cornfield if that blood was, let's say, in the trunk of a car? Correct.
Dr. Klein, thank you. Thank you. Nothing further. Any redirect? Go ahead, yes, Mr. Brown. Very, very short, Judge. Uh, the fingernails that were collected, those were submitted to the uh, DCI lab, is that correct? Yes. For purposes of DNA comparison? Yes. I, I think I did forget to ask you about that. Uh, but would, would um, the, any of the skin cells, if there were any underneath the fingernails, would those be affected by the same decomposition process that you described earlier? Yes. And the, the constellation of wounds that we observed in the photos, uh, what was the, the estimation of the number again? Right, so nine definitive, and I suspect up to 12. Okay. So if you're suspecting four additional stab type wounds, what is it that affects your opinion as to whether or not you can say those are definitive stab wounds? In the wounds that I said were definitive, I had at least two points of reference. Uh, they would be either corroborated by uh, defects to the bone or defects to clothing. Um, there were some wounds that I had neither of those, just a soft tissue injury, and due to decomposition, um, I, I felt that it was uh, highly suspicious for sharp force injury, but uh, was not 100%. Right. And lastly, Dr. Klein, uh, you were asked cons uh, concerning how much bleeding would be associated with the wounds that you observed. You remember that? Yes. All right. There would be a, a significant amount of bleeding. Would that be true? Yes. Uh, if that bleeding occurred outside of a vehicle and it ended up on the ground, would it be readily recognizable uh, on the ground weeks later? Um, I think after rain and decomposition, it, it could be not uh, visibly apparent to the eye.